How's it going, Lewis? It's going. It's going good. Um, Jesus. Yeah, I think my mic's pretty loud, actually. <laughs> well, you peaked right at the start there, so a fucking incredible start. Nice. Um, <laughs> Only uh, the highest quality of productions on this channel. <laughs> <laughs> Only the highest. Um, yeah, I'm going pretty good. Uh, uh, I guess it's like the first time people have heard me since I've actually turned uh, 20. So, yeah, I'm a year older now. Um, thank you very much. You managed um, to live another year. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm on decade number two now, so here, here, here's, here, here's to hoping that this is equally as shitty, but, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, uh, it was, yeah. God. Yeah, that, that pretty much sums up my 20th birthday, too, when that happens. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah this, I'm, yeah, after a point, you get to this age where you're just like, oh, I'm not dead yet. All right, cool. <laughs> Just keep keep on keep on coming. Like it was just I don't know. I played Overwatch. Like I I like bought I gave I like gifted myself Overwatch. So um, I even wrapped it up in like a little uh, present thing wow. for myself. Yeah yeah yeah. Because yeah. like I don't get like I don't generally like um people just give me money on my birthday. So I'm just like I buy myself gifts. So I'm just like I I miss the feeling of unwrapping things. So I just like wrapped uh, overwatch and uh persona 4 dancing all night um so like i just kind of wrapped them up for myself did a little like uh i guess note for myself as well it said happy 20th birthday me um and yeah i i, I unwrapped that the day of uh on my birthday that actually sounds kind of sad when you put it that way man <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm not justifying it in any way, shape, or form. I'm just, I'm just saying what what happened. It was a pretty, pretty sad anime. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, we're back to a normal Saturday morning ramblings this week, which uh, we didn't even have really have anyone of any form last week. Although, judging by the view count, maybe we should just ramble about Re Zero every week and just label it that because apparently yeah. that immediately gets you twice the amount of views in like a fraction of the time. So we just like upload each individual, individual show conversation yeah, yeah, yeah. rambling about 91 days rambling about orange you know he'll be great it's, on, it's honestly not a bad idea the problem is that it would like really fuck with the view things like if people go to the channel and then they look at the video list and they're just like uh, yeah. ramblings on blah 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 and it's just gonna be like fucking all over the place it's not very organized so Playlist. Like, honestly, even right now, Saturday Morning Rambles being all over the fucking channel is kind of a clusterfuck mm. trying to find the scripted stuff, which is something I was kind of, like, worried about before starting this because I was like, maybe I should just have a separate channel to upload this kind of stuff on so that it doesn't cluster the list or whatever. I don't know. It's still a possibility because I still have all the videos saved so I could just re-upload them to a separate channel if I eventually decide to do that. But, well, you know. Ultimately, this is, you know, your problem for just being immensely lazy. Like, it's not know, a matter of being lazy it's a matter of i don't know what the best approach is well i'm just saying in regards to like not getting enough scripted videos out and just constantly relying on this to like clutter up your shit man well if i didn't watch so many fucking shows every season i'd be able to get more content out quicker that's See, the recurring it's... thing i notice with other people who do fucking stuff on youtube have you noticed how much stuff they watch each season it's like a fraction of the stuff i watch well like i'm a productive human being and i don't watch any anime so like you know <laughs> As clearly say, the the moral yeah. here is the more anime you watch the more unproductive and a failure at life you are is obviously what the moral is so we should probably get into the anime because before we ramble on too long about you know random shit that no one cares about uh about and us. talk about shows that nobody cares about except recently. yeah so oh. uh we should start with that then uh that we're <laughs> I don't know if we should necessarily cover both episodes of ReZero. I kind of did that on my own last week, but I guess we could very briefly go over 18 before going to 19 because there were some uh, oh. few things I didn't get to mention with 18 that I wanted to. So I might just do that and then kind of open the floor to you if you wanted to add anything. If I can. If you can. So uh, uh, episode 18, something I wanted to uh, mention that I didn't have time to add on to was... Uh, as, as good as the episode was, there there was a bit of silliness to it that <laughs> made me laugh. Like, I, the, the directing was very, uh, how do I put it? Blunt, I should say. Um, I liked a lot of it, like the lighting with, like, you know, it becoming shadows and overcast when Subaru was talking about how much he hates himself and stuff like that. Um, 
Like, that stuff's fine. I don't mind that at all. It's it's decently solid. But when, when Rem says that he's her hero and then the fucking doves start flying across the sky, it's just <laughs> like, oh my god. Did you really have to do that? It was it was a little too much. It's like I imagine most people didn't have a problem because no, most people didn't really mention it at all. But it's always like that that little barrier for people as far as like they watch stuff that kind of like breaks it for them. And that level of like overtness, heavy handedness was like, sweet Christ, please stop. It, which it did. It, it it made it more low key after that. It was just that one little scene. And to be fair, they did actually kind of like lead up to it because when Rem started talking at first, it showed Dove starting to gather on like the pillars and stuff. Oh yeah. Or whatever. So it did kind of lead up to it, but it was still super corny. Which, I mean, I guess the speech in general was kind of corny, but at the same time, it was still a really important moment. So it was kind of like a little too much for the scene. I wish they had kind of like not done that little bit they didn't really need it. it it was fine as it was um but yeah there was also other stuff i was gonna mention but i already forgot already so if you wanted to add anything lewis well i hope to remember what else i was gonna talk about with ReZero 18 um well i feel like you know the kind of like the dove symbolism there was really just sort of like a uh transition into light so to speak you know because that entire uh, point of episode 18 was just like that sort of transition from dark subaru to light subaru and the best way to kind of like um i guess give the image of that uh literally is to have a sort of flock of doves flying up behind a sort of the image of i wouldn't necessarily say purity or love but just kind of like the <laughs> the, 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 the 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 good thing happening in the show you know rem has always been sort of well post her arc so to speak she's always been sort of that sort of uh uh, sweetness, the goodness, that 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 kind of like good foil, I guess is the best way to describe it, that kind of Subaru needed. Um, so have that sort of like in tandem with uh, the doves, I think that just kind of like give the symbolism, uh, I mean, gave the scene that sort of like necessary symbolism. But uh, yeah, it was, even looking back on it, it was still pretty over the top i guess um like it, it it was literally just i think it was just with the work between the the orchestra as well going into it as well um uh as for i suppose i should just give my overall thoughts for on episode 18 like it was yeah yeah it was a good episode but like it was just a matter <sighs> i don't know how to accurately describe this while kind of making it my own thought if that makes any real sense but it it was kind of like maybe it was a little too elongated but i feel like that was the entire point of it like they had that sort of like struggle with uh Saru to get his um uh 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 you know, fuck it it was good it was good it was good <laughs> never mind um <laughs> I think I kind of understand what you uh, what mean about the silliness at the start of the episode. I felt that sort of thing as well. The main villain, what's his face? Um, Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse, yeah. He's, he, they're really walking a tight line with him. Like They're trying to kind of like um, make him appear to be this ultimate lunatic while... Um, having this sort of strong and uh, dire and evil power to him, like making this all evil, all insane human being, what Subaru could have been if he, you know, kept with them, which is power. Like that's sort of like, because I guess that's what they were leading into, is this is what Subaru could have been. You know, this is, uh, he, this is what the witch's power does to people. Uh, but um, the problem is with Belagus is that he is too insane, if that makes any sense. Because the only real, uh, I guess, interactions we've seen with him are just the sort of like wackiness uh, and just utter lunacy that we've come to know and love coming from him. But it's just been too much, and I like wacky characters. I really, really do like insane villains. But 
it's hard to really take him seriously, you know? It, it's it's kind of like when all you can really see from him is just that sort of like wacky I'm going to just kill this dude. Haha. <laughs> um like it it was a very I don't know. He's a he's a very peculiar villain that oddly strikes my taste but at the same time is just too much, you know. Um as for the rest of my thoughts on episode 19, I feel like I'd just be repeating whatever you whatever said, so, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I get it. It's sort of the same idea, but, um, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily, uh, better use himself that's to blame necessarily. It's more the directing. Like, I get the idea of, I've mentioned it before, the over-the-top insane character that's, like, genuinely insane rather than the, you know, typically idea of insane where they're just, like, kind of like dicks and stuff like that. It's uh, it's like he's genuinely unpredictable, and he's and and uh, and that kind of thing. But like you said, he's it comes off more as wacky. But I don't think that's necessarily the writing. I think it's the directing and the way he like just generally moves around, which again is the idea of portraying him as like unpredictable and like out there, but comes across as like dark humored more than like sinister. Because they could easily do a cute little directing tweaks and make it more sinister than it is right now. Um. But it could just be a perspective thing again. Like I think we both kind of uh, have a bit of uh, enjoyment of dark humor, so it comes mm. across more humorously to us than probably a lot of other people. Um, and I'll try and keep this short because we move on to the actual current episode that aired. Um, oh yeah. But uh, I, uh, the dove thing you mentioned. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with the whole transition thing, and that was the idea. Like, I, I don't have a problem with the idea behind it. The problem is just, like, just literally, visually, it's corny. And, like, I would have fine if they did the light stuff, like, from the sun breaking through the clouds without the doves. Like, that would have been fine. It's just the doves that are corny. I just... Oh, yeah. It's hard to explain unscripted without thinking about it, but it's just, like, the idea of, like, you know, directors manipulating, like, the way things look, like, through the weather and environment and stuff, like, is fine, because that's just how it works. But when, like... When you've got random animals doing stuff Snow White style, like that's when it's like a little too much, <laughs> you know. That's what that's the thing. Um, the thing I was gonna mention, I won't go too into it because again, we should move on to the current episode. But one of the things I wanted to go over in my unscripted ramblings that I didn't have time to was um, there were it wasn't a whole lot of people, but there were a couple people. Well, I guess even people who liked the episode mentioned it, but they were like surprised that they liked the episode because it was a bunch of talking, which. Is always something that confused me because I I guess it's the really hard push that people give for like show don't tell without understanding the idea behind show don't tell, um, because you can do it in dialogue. Don't don't ask me to give examples without thinking about it and writing a script, but there are. Um, ReZero's done it itself in a couple things, um, but the I've never understood that because we're we're like almost entering a period where people are like being conditioned to think like almost all dialogue is bad, which mm -hmm. is not a good direction. I've always been a proponent for dialogue. I mean, you can have bad dialogue. I'm not saying that, but p people's inherent aversion to dialogue, the same way they're having a ver uh, inherent aversions to like light novel ad adaptations and stuff like that, has always been like rubbed me the wrong way because I feel like that's going in a bad direction. Um, so maybe I'll do a video at some point on how dialogue can be good. But this the episode was an example of, like, the perfect example of good dialogue because it led up to this confrontation. Uh, we perfectly understand both sides of it. And it's not just, like, a, you know, one-sided expository thing where it's like, you're a good person, oh, okay, thanks, and then they leave. You know? It's actually, like, a power play point. Like, they constantly flip sides a decent amount. Like, Remmel's, like, one of my favorite, like, uh, what, what's the word? Favorite, uh... I can't remember the exact word, so I'm just going to say trade-offs, uh, that they had was when Rem told Subaru that giving up was easy, and then that, like, pissed him off because of all the mm. shit he's been through. And he talked about how, like, vaguely, he talked about all the shit he'd been through and how it wasn't easy to give up and it was easy to think he could actually do something. And then after all that rambling, Rem just, like, stops for a second and just, just repeats herself and says giving up is easy. Like, that's the kind of, like, dialogue that's great because, like, it's this power play point. Like, his... You know, she says giving up's easy, and you're like, yeah, giving up is easy. And then Subaru lays it out, and you're like, oh my god, no, yeah, like, he went mm -hmm. through some shit. It wasn't easy to give up. And then she recoils back that it's easy, despite what he said. And she's like, you know, maybe she is right all along, after all. Like, that's 
that's the good dialogue when like it's not the only example but like when there's constant like power play at work and like an argument that's when dialogue is good and interesting so always so i don't know it was just w annoying seeing people give comments like it was good even though it was a bunch of talking <laughs> i don't know why i liked it it was just like oh my god please <laughs> stop having inherent aversion yeah. to dialogue <laughs> um i could go into more detail but we really do need to talk about the current episode but it probably won't be long because it was mainly uh what's the word i'm looking for not a filler episode but like a a lead-up episode so I guess that's part, yeah yeah it's a lead-up episode which i know people were disappointed by it and i'll get to my thoughts after you talk about that but um what did you think of the current episode episode 19 of ReZero, lewis it's kind of ironic, uh, you know, we're finally up on the up and end, you know, we're finally getting to see a positive side of uh, Subaru again, and now we're on an episode where hundreds of people will die, but, you know, it's, Subaru's happy, so that's all that matters. Um, uh, yeah, like, it, it's kind of, I really like the fact that, um, I guess, I guess the best way to put it is that Subaru is still showing signs of being scarred i guess of like his failed attempts like um he's not completely like you know oh i'm happy 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 subaru again it, it was little things in the episode that they didn't well i guess they paid attention to just ever so slightly you know when he was having the, the meeting with krush and instead of being that like desperate uh i guess pitiful mess that he was beforehand he's now kind of like formidable he has his pride he has that like respectful handshake with uh Krush. and just there, there's that little little moment of that little flashback to um when he was in that state and he just kind of like takes that little gulp and it it was a nice touch that they, they're not letting him forget about his uh previous self um i guess is the best way to put it uh, but for the other ongoings of the episode, it's kind of, yeah, it's really just a lead up. Um, it's because I feel like a lot of this is probably going to factor in to the next few episodes, especially with the entire, when people die, uh, well, rather when people get killed by the white whale, people will get forgotten. Um, I feel like that a lot is going to be factoring in because I feel like that group of old men or whatever they're going to be like you know oh shit man wasn't it great that the, all three of us were able to defeat the white whale when actually there was like four of them I feel like that's just going to factor in as well um, another thing which I'm going to find interesting is the uh, how if if they manage to actually defeat the white whale and there will be casualties how will they react, you know? Will they be like, wow, I can't believe we're able to beat the white whale with such small numbers. We we had, like, so few here, and we were able to take it down. Or will they kind of go, will just a large uh, amount of loss be able to go, wait, this doesn't feel right. Was There had to be more of us here, right? Or... It is it really kind of the entire concept of white whale is pretty interesting. I'm really kind of interested to see how it goes. Um, as for the rest of it, yeah, it was literally just a, it shows the kind of I guess um, it, it gave more insight into the uh, mindset of the uh, what are they called the 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 the, 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 the Priestess of the, the something, you know, the p people who Melia are all voted for, priestess, something. The other priestess candidates? Boom, yeah. Um, that's the name. It showed the mindset of those with, like, you know, they're taking the political matters aside to obviously um, kill this great white thing. So it's uh, it was a cool, cool uh, moment, you know. Uh... What else? I feel like that's the only thing that really struck a chord with me. Um, the the main thing that really kind of like I could really take from that episode was just pondering really um, of what potential things are to come. Mainly how our casualties going to be taken into account with the white whale. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I, I really enjoyed this episode. It's nice to see Subaru's happy again. Yeah, it's... Uh... 
it was I don't know if the word disappointing is right uh, not as far as the episode goes but as far as the reaction to the episode goes but uh seeing a lot of people like not like the episode um because of the last one was kind of frustrating because it's the idea that like the show needs to like constantly be at 11 with like the mm-hmm. drama or the stakes and stuff like that like like a fucking Tetsu Araki show or something where everyone's screaming 24-7. It's like, you you need the ebb and flow to make the intensity stronger. Like, the whole reason 18 hits so strong is, I mean, somewhat intense stuff was happening in the previous episodes as far as, like, Subaru failing, but for the most part, it was just learning information. Um, it wasn't, like, constantly intense or anything, necessarily. Um, so, so 18 comes around, and then the intensity of, like, you know, all that build up is what happens. Like you have to build up to it and then boom, like you gotta, you gotta prepare your food before you eat it. You can't just pull ingredients out of the kitchen and just shove them in your mouth. Like it doesn't work that way. So I, I mean, not to say that there aren't people that could be disappointed in the episode, you know, at all. Like I'm the opinions are opinions. It's just, it, it feels like a lot of people didn't like the episode just because of the comparison of the intensity with the last couple episodes, when the point of this episode was very much to show Subaru's resolve has come back. Like, he's back in his right straight of mind, he's using knowledge he learned from the previous arcs, or previous deaths, in order to uh, figure out the solution to this arc. Uh, and that's the kind of the entire point. I think what's really interesting, though, is whether this will be the final loop. Because based on the previous arcs that happened and everything that's happening in this one, it seems like it's interesting because the the arcs where Subaru is like most emotionally vulnerable and kind of like opens himself to people is the ones where he succeeds. Like it's a recurring pattern that like the only way Subaru's made it through arcs so far is by relying on other people, not necessarily directly, but just other people have been the reason he's been able to do anything at all, which was kind of the point of one of a lot of the stuff in 18 where Subaru mentions he can't actually do anything. Um, like in arc one, the only reason they managed to get out of it is because he ran into Reinhard and mentioned, you know, got to know him and then asked Felt to go find him. And then in the second arc, the only reason he managed to not get completely murdered by the maids is because he, Amelia saw what he was going through, saw through him, he broke down, and then Amelia let the maids know that he's a good person. And they trust, uh, they trusted her as long as seeing Subaru just, like, collapse, essentially, in her lap. So, and now this arc is him you know, is him confiding, not necessarily confiding, but, like, venting to Rem, and then she's, like, you know, telling him that everything's, you know, he's fine, it's, everything's okay, or not everything's okay, but that he's a good person, um, so it's, like, these are always the, the ones where they, and where he ends up succeeding at the end of the day, so it's kind of interesting, because there's a lot of episodes left, but then again, the second arc also went for quite a few extra episodes because they went past the beginning stuff and he's like, I'm still alive. But then he had all the curses from all the bites and stuff. And they had a couple more episodes with that. So it seems like we're on the final loop of this arc, but who knows mm-hmm. what'll really happen. Um, but yeah, the main point of the, uh, the episode was just to show Subaru being, you know, back in his resolve, figuring out all that stuff. Uh, and it was nice to see that him. It was, it was kind of nice to go back to the kind of like slightly lighter tone of, like, him just kind of walking around, you know, talking to weird people, coming up with some strategies and stuff like that. Um, do we want to throw down money on on whether a REM permadeath's going to happen? Because I can totally <laughs> see it coming. I see it yeah. coming a mile away. Yeah, I know. Ex- how do you say it? Yeah. I, I would not be surprised at all if the arc ends up having REM sacrifice herself. For some reason or other, something happens. It's, the, it's like, the only way to get through the arc and Subaru probably won't want it to happen, but Rem will do it anyways. And then after he gets through it, he will probably try and reset and it won't work or at least it will work, but it won't go back far enough. He'll have passed his checkpoint. I'm, I'm willing to throw down money that this will happen. And it it, it would be like, everyone would get really mad because of like, just, just reaction to episode 18. Holy shit. If a Rem permadeath happened, there would be literal (laughs) riots, but because of episode 18, it would also make perfect sense for it to happen because of everything that's happened so far. Mainly, like I said, with episode 18, like a REM permadeath being like the nail in the coffin is like, yeah, it, it follows up perfectly from that. So like it wouldn't be out of left field because I imagine that would happen and a lot of people would be like, the author's just trying to piss us off, which may be part of it, <laughs> but it makes sense 
I don't want to use the word thematically because it's not quite right. But as far as like the pieces being put in place for something like that to happen has been established at this point. And it did even a little bit of it in the 19. These little tiny death flags appearing, which may or may not be followed up on. We'll see what happens. I'm willing to bet that it'll happen, but I'm not entirely sure. It's just a guess at this point. We have quite a few <laughs> episodes left. Um, was there anything else you wanted to add, add about the episode, Lewis? Um, it's funny that you talk about permadeath because, like, I feel like, uh, what's his face, the old swordsman? Um, the old dude. I feel like there will be many, probably, sacrifices in this episode, or just of the white whale as a whole, because... Um, he, I don't know. Like, I feel like when we're talking about flags here, him just looking over a bed of flowers, um, talking about his dead wife and whatnot. I feel like that kind of like is raising some flags of him dying. Um, he, he him also having like sort of like I guess almost poetic justice. You know, he'll sacrifice himself to the white whale because his wife, um allegedly got murdered by it allegedly uh so we'll have that sort of poetic justice with him uh, uh i also feel like that won't be the only permadeath this arc i feel like the entire this arc is sent up so, uh, quite a few um uh, maybe Krush as well i that's a long shot but i feel like there will be something else other than simply rem and uh the old swordsman so it's gonna be interesting I feel like this this arc has set up a lot of potential, uh, more potential than uh, previous arcs have set up, you know? Like, because um, this arc has a lot of things weighing on it. We had, like, everything with, like, you know... Because if this mission fails, Amelia dies, and if it succeeds, more people will die. So I think that's a general uh, thing that's going to go down. Uh, but yeah, that's that's just kind of my overall thoughts of it. I feel like there's going to be a lot more punishment for the viewer than we anticipate. It's interesting to bring up stakes because one of the arguments a lot of people who don't like the show give is, oh my god, with all this time resetting, there's no stakes at all because everyone just lives again, which is mm. something stupid, and I'll address it in my eventual review of ReZero because that's probably going to happen because there's a lot of things to talk about at ReZero even though we've been talking about it each week. <laughs> um, also, that lovely view count because that's, un that's you know, <laughs> it's too tasty to ignore. Fact, yeah. <laughs> um, uh. But uh, it's, it's interesting because this Quinn could put up even bigger stakes at this point that have been put up so far with the people dying because yes the arcs have played out optimally so far as far as nobody dying but the idea of like people getting killed off in this arc and then not being able to be revived because of the checkpoint system that subaru has is very much a thing that could start happening with this arc and in a way that's also another reason to, to for the possibility of Rem permadeath, because what bigger nail in the coffin for showing that that's a thing that can happen than doing it to Rem, you know? Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. It could still not end up killing anyone at all. I, I'm, I'm sure just like you're saying that people are going to die to the White Whale. Like, I don't think this is going to be a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Deathless attempt on the yeah. White Whale. Uh, whether it's a bunch of nobodies or someone we actually know by name, though, is something to be seen. Um, I think you mentioned something about the old man. I wouldn't be surprised if he gave his life to kill the white whale, do the killing yeah. blow or something like that. I could see that happening. Um, but yeah, mainly it's just going to be interesting to see what happens, which everyone will know what happens in the next episode, like an hour after this goes up because we <laughs> recorded a day late. But hey, Woo. hey, what do you know? Get that final <laughs> word in. <laughs> exactly. Uh, was there anything else you wanted to add, Lewis? No, no, that's it. Yeah. All right, cool. We should move on to, I believe we do Orange next then. Uh, and it's kind of a shame we didn't get to record last week because I, as, I was actually curious about your thoughts on the episode, uh, given what you thought so far. But this episode worked as a nice double to it. So uh, episodes five and six of Orange. Um, what's a quick recap? Uh, five was basically... The festival. The I startup guess. to the festival? Guess, yeah. And then six was the actual festival. Um, uh, the finer details of stuff happening is largely just, like, the usual, like, 
you know, try and do the stuff that the letter suggests, but whether it actually works or not, who knows what's important, what's not, you know, the letter's just guessing at this point of what actually is the best route, so it's not necessarily yeah. correct. Uh, anyways, what did you think of these two episodes of Orange, Lewis? Um, I remember thinking during it, because I, I watched, like, uh, 91 Days and Orange as kind of, like, a bunch as, like, on the same day, and um, I watched, like... 91 Days first, and I watched Orange, and I was kind of thinking while watching it, uh, my excitement for what would probably go for what, yeah, for, um, for further events, I guess, has probably swapped between 91 Days and Orange. Hmm. Uh, like, I feel like, you know, um, things have been kind of, the ending of episode 6 with Sua admitting, Sua's his name, yeah, um, admitting that he had a letter. I think that's kind of like, it kind of like made things a lot more, made things have Everything a lot that's more. happened so far, all the character actions make a lot more sense now. Yeah, yeah. I, I was kind of like pulled a few threads together while still kind of like opening up a lot more routes which the row, the show could go down. Um, I also, um, this is probably something that was probably the throne array really, but I also kind of like, liked the way they kind of explored, um, time travel in the show with the chemistry teacher like it was very it felt pretty ham-fisted like it was just like by the way guys time travel huh <laughs> um like it, it really felt that ham-fisted but it was still kind of cool that they brought it up and they kind of like um let uh blah, 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 blah. main girl i forget her name uh no uh, uh yeah that's you it you can just call her kind of hanazawa yeah that'd be a lot easier <laughs> um they kind of like and made her aware of the consequences of tra time travel and what may or may not go down, um, which was nice. Um, uh, so yeah, yeah, it, it, they really helped bring that together nicely. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how far the letters go as well, because I'm also kind of interested to see how well. I wouldn't necessarily say, like, the characters would feel like they're being used, but they almost feel like, you know, uh, how this is going probably going to affect Kakaru, because, like, how, how would I word this? Like, they're essentially following a guideline to save his life, and if, if Kakaru does end up finding about this, he probably will be less than pleased, you know? Mm -hmm. So, it'll be interesting to see how far this goes, uh, in regards to keeping stuff a secret and how this will actually over affect the overall team, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, the last few episodes of Orange have been a lot more exciting, a lot more uh, worthwhile, I guess is probably the best way to put it. Um, oh, what? And yeah, it's just been a very, a lot more enjoyable show because... I feel like they're bringing in the entire matter of consequences. Um, like, you know, if you do this, something bad will happen. If you do, don't do this. Um, if you do this, something good will happen or something bad might happen. Like, they, they bring in consequences a lot. And especially with the entire, like, oh, I shouldn't have brought him out that one day because then he would have been able to see his mother one last time or... Uh, I'm glad that I was able to do this. Like they, they really are bringing in the entire thing of consequences again, which is very, very um, good. <laughs> to put it bluntly. Um, so yeah, uh, Orange has definitely improved tenfold uh, since I started watching it. So yeah, good, good stuff. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you exactly why that time travel talk was in there. It was because when the show started, I actually saw some people bashing the show because the idea was that you know naha was in the future and was married to sua and they had a kid and people were like she's sending this letter to the past and she's she's gonna rewrite history and like get rid of this kid and it's like that's fucked up mm -hmm. that's exactly why it was in there because they need to be like hey parallel dimensions hey naho knows about them hey <laughs> she knows that her <laughs> kid's not gonna get reset she just wants to save the guy's life um, which is something I appreciated because I don't know if it was the same episode. It may have, was it in episode five or was it four and we just didn't talk about it? Uh, what time travel? Yeah, that was the time travel five. talk. 
yeah, it was in five, five. Um, okay because yeah. it was in five then that makes sense because in addition to that it almost felt like it was like even more so about that because not only was there the time travel talk but there was a lot of stuff in the letter mentioning how sua was going out of his way to help her and how she should appreciate him because that was always something that was weird was like i already understood the multiple you know lines thing and that didn't bother me as far as like naho sending a letter to try and change the past but what did bother me was that she was just kind of like yeah go out with kakiro as if she like regretted her current life going out with sua like she oh, just yeah. went with second best was like whatever but the letter in the fifth in episode five made it a lot more clear that she like she has a lot of respect for him and obviously her current old self loves him but it made it clear that she she was able to see all this good stuff uh, in in sua and i imagine when kakuru took his life or even before then if they were going out before then that it was pretty easy to see why they would start going out and it was kind of nice for the letter to to acknowledge that that was a thing because it, it makes me wonder if the idea later on of whether going out with kakuru is really the right thing to do which isn't necessarily like you know she can decide who she has feelings for like if she has feelings for him by all means but it was it seemed like the idea was like hey go out with kakuru that'll stop him from killing himself mm. whereas it seems like now it seems more like go with where you your heart kind of belongs and just trying to do your best to keep him alive and the direction is leaning more towards that now and i like that a lot more because uh, while I always liked Orange, the idea of like going out with him to save his life was kind of like, eh, mm -hmm. I don't know how I feel necessarily about that. Um, but yeah, I liked the, the, the twist at the end of Six about how Sue has a letter, which also raises the question of who else got letters. Um, because it could be, you know, everyone in the group. It could just be those two. Who really knows? Um, and the it, it really puts his light and it makes me like Sua even more because I liked him before when he was being a total bro and helping out Naho and Kakuru with their relationship and how they were like fighting and stuff like that. Yeah. He was helping him to get together. But at the same time, it was a little too idealistic. It's the kind of character that is, well, a nice guy, easy to write. Just have him, you know, go out of his way to help them out. And although the directing helped portray him in, in a pretty good light is, is uh, more than just that. The letter puts it in a lot more context of why he's doing it. Yeah. So it, it really helped solidify his characterization a hell of a lot more, which was very much appreciated. Um, and yeah, like you said, it's kind of just going to be interesting to see where it goes from here on out. Because I think we're at the halfway point. I think there's 12 episodes in the show, uh, 12 or 13 sense, or something yeah. like that. So that'll be interesting to see. Something else I want to do after when I get the chance is... I know Orange's publication was weird and like two volumes or something were released before it went on hiatus for a couple of years and then got brought back due to fan demand. So I'm curious huh. where it stopped and then started again. And I want to see if there's a noticeable difference in the approach to writing as far as like whether it's, you know, just general plot stuff, characters, themes, anything like that. Because I'm curious if that little break in time made the writer maybe rethink some things or maybe they just became a better writer over time. Who knows? Um... So I'm curious where that break was, or if someone knows in the comments, if it's if it's happened in the show already, where was the break in the publication that happened? And if it hasn't aired yet, don't 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 say it, yeah, because yeah, obviously yeah. that'd be a spoiler. Yeah. Um But uh I, I would really be interested to know where that happened and compare the two uh as far as that time gap goes. Uh but yeah, was uh was there anything else you wanted to add, Lewis? Um just as a matter of, like, you said something about, like, who uh, else might have letters. I feel like Sua was a little bit too casual in, like, his kind of, like, acknowledgement of, like, oh, so you have a letter too, right? Um, so I feel like that sort of thing where, like, the group also has kind of, like, discussed it and, like, just kind of let Naho out of it because, I don't know, Maybe she just felt it was she was a little bit too clinical to the plan almost, so they just kind of felt like leave her alone, there leave her do her own thing, which kind of makes a, the rest of the group's actions a lot make a lot more sense because they're playing like basically just hitch, you know, they're just like making them them all come together a little bit too much, you know, like there there's like you know your friends just like putting two people together like and then there's like what the people were doing they were literally going out of their way separating their group to make sure they got together so i guess it makes their actions a lot more uh reasonable rather than just like going out of the way to like split up the group you know um so 
that's why I feel like with the rest of the people actually uh having letters. Mm. Yeah, that mm. that that makes <laughs> a lot of sense. Um, and something I forgot to mention though is that I like orange, but one of the neg- aspects that I don't like is Kakuru's ex girlfriend. I've I yeah. really don't like bitchy one sided characters yeah. in shows just to generate drama. Um. Like, I, I get how she'd be jaded. Like, she's not just naturally bitchy like some other characters in shows where they're just, like, a bitch by default. She's actually, like, you know, kind of jaded because he broke up with her and stuff like that. So at least she has a reason. But at the same time, it's still, like, so utterly pointlessly bitchy and <laughs> obviously just there to generate drama and fuck with shit that it's just like, come on. You don't have to do this to generate drama. Like... It makes sense in shows where romance is, like, the only point, the only thing at stake, because then there's a wrench in the plan, which causes conflict, and therefore, like, something to overcome. But this is already trying to stop him from fucking killing himself, and so this chick just fucking with them in, like, generic rom-com bitchy style is just, like, so boring. It's, well, it's not boring, it's just irritating. Yeah. So, it's, it's, I don't know, I hope they do less of it, um... I we'll see. She just got fucked over big time in the last episode. Yeah. So she might come up with some crazy shit, who knows. Um if the author turns this around and somehow somehow makes her important to keeping Kakura alive, I'd be impressed because there's always a possibility of like unforeseen shit, who knows. And the fact that she sticks around is like possibly leading to something other than just the bitchiness, but who knows. Um but yeah, that was just something I wanted to mention. The current, the current stuff they're doing is like just annoying, and it's not yeah. that fun. It's just dumb. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, um, I feel like that was just literally just to throw a spanner in the works of just kind of like throwing in a, a necessary evil, so to speak, to the game. Yeah. Um, which you know is all good, but uh, I don't know. Like, at least. What I do appreciate, though, is that they did definitely give her a sort of reason to be a little bit jaded, you know, rather than just being kind of like a naturally bitch. Because those, mm-hmm. are, those are just the worst, you know. Yeah. Uh, was there anything else you wanted to say about Orange? Yeah, no, it's good. All right. Uh, we should move on then. It'll be interesting to hear your thoughts because you kind of mentioned it briefly, but uh, we should move on to 91 Days, Episode 5 and 6. And... I don't remember the exact details of what happened in 5, but I know what happened <laughs> in 6, because quite a decent amount of shit happened. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, what did you think of the last two episodes of 91 Days, Lewis? Uh, like, this is... Uh, 5 was just... It was there. Like, it was... My problem with 91 Days is that it feels very... I guess... Um... How how would I put this? A lot of the sort of like overall families' uh, actions feel like they don't have that much weight because the entire plot has been set up to uh, as just a redemption story for Angelo uh, to get like revenge on his father or to get vengeance for his father. So with this entire thing that's been set up with the, the kind of like family wars, they're necessary within this type of show. Um, but, um, how would I put this? The ca- they're not well defined. Like I, I remember like looking at some characters, and just kind of thinking to myself, who are they? What what's what's their purpose in the show? Um, are they like I? Mm, like that was just a constant theme within like looking at some of the characters, which was, uh, quite frustrating. Um. So episode 5 was just a very kind of like, um, it was an episode of anime that I just didn't really give a crap about, like, it was just, it just kind of <laughs> happened, you know? Um, now episode 6 was a lot better, because I feel like 91 Days is at its best when it concentrates on the vengeance story, the, the everything with Angelo and getting revenge on his father because the world has been set up to accommodate um, that story really because we have these feuding families and Angelo father eh, uh, Angelo's father's death was just a sort of 
I guess part of business, you know. It was it was something that like the families had to do because it's business, you know. And the mafia kills people for business, you know. So that's just that was the sort of thing that I set up. But like my problem is is that like uh <sighs> God, I cannot word this. My problem is that when the world tries to this is gonna sound very bad, but when they try to create subplots, it's bad. Like it, it, it. Whenever it tries to go that little extra mile, it, they fail completely. Like it, it's. I, f for once, this is probably like the only show where I feel like they would benefit a lot by just keeping it simple. Like they, they, they're going above and beyond with creating this wide cast of characters who has like the these like wide, uh goals and aspirations and reasons to being here like they're while ultimately not really having much significance to any overall uh plot or anything really like i, I kind of mentioned this with orange but like or was it orange yeah it was orange um but consequences in the show are very very important uh like they're they're really the sort of thing that really kind of like makes the actions worthwhile because like we've we've seen directly what consequences happen within orange like you know if some if they don't follow the letter exactly Kakuru will die which is a huge huge thing it's been established like Kakuru's a nice guy they don't want him to die so but nine more days doesn't really grasp grasp that if you if you understand me like it doesn't feel like like episode six for example orko died they cooked him up and ate him in lasagna i don't this could just me being an absolute idiot here but like i don't um i don't feel like that has much like effect on the show like he's the he's the leader of a big big mafia family yeah, I'm just kind of here sitting and thinking, well, mm, I wonder how the lasagna tastes. It's not, mm. like, it's, it doesn't really feel like it has that much of a, any sort of consequence. Like, this, so that, that was my main problem with it. However, episode six was a lot better because they had the concentration, uh, prime and f focused on the entire vengeance story with, uh, Angelo, and as I said before, that's when it gets like it's it's at its best because that's when how the entire show was set up to be. It was set up to be this uh, entire breathtaking and story about like this dude that died. You know, it, it it's good, but yeah, that's just basically my entire point with episode five. It was mainly episode five that had that sort of like overall, uh non-existent sort of like non-consequential like this stuff was happening but i didn't really give a shit because like it, i didn't really get it like you know it could just be me, me being an idiot but i feel like it just that's just how the show was set up you know it was just it was just there wasn't really all that sort of like fight for survival that orange is even having which is strange <laughs> No, I'm I'm with you. It's 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 the idea is that it's empty because these characters aren't all that other than I guess a couple of the ones we're following around like Angelo, the characters aren't all that defined. Like mm -hmm. you mentioned, you know, Orko's fucking mob leader like he hasn't really done much other than whine about lasagna, so he just gets killed off and it's like whatever, man. You know, who cares? And it's the same thing like when Nero's brother betrayed him. Like we saw that guy for like 5 fucking minutes, maybe tops <laughs> before. So we, these characters are doing all this shit, and so it's like, I guess one way to put it, which isn't entirely correct, is that the show's going too quickly. It's, it's, uh, like, things are happening way too fast for them to have any impact, but the real, the reality is that this is that the characters, are like, we haven't gotten to know them at all. Like, the act, the, the things that are happening would be fine if we got to know these characters better, other than just, hey, here's this person, here's their name. Here's what they do in the group. Okay, bye. And then that's it. That's all we really got to know. Like, I, and I think it's probably because 
Studio Shuka has way too big a boner for Fango. Like, it's very, very clear <laughs> that he's their favorite character because he always does the wackiest shit with, like, the weirdest directing. Like, the... It's like they just want to get to the Fango scenes to get fucking weird and have fun, and they don't care about anything else other than maybe Angelo's Revenge Story, like you mentioned, because it's, like, kind of the entire plot of the show. But yeah. <laughs> everyone else, they're just like, eh, whatever, who cares? Like, that one guy who keeps getting injured, like, how many fucking times is that guy going to get shot before he finally dies? Like, why... Why the fuck did... Why is, why is he still alive and walking around after getting shot, like, in multiple different situations? As opposed to, like, I don't know, Daisuke Ono's character who's already dead. <laughs> like, it seems like he... We should have gotten to know him better. Which kind of worked in its favor, because the entire point was, like, we were getting to know him and like him. And then before it could even go any further, he's fucking dead. Yeah. So that was the point, and that worked. But now we're just, like, beating around the bush. Like, not a whole lot's happening. And I... They did a decent job with the Angelo trickery with the or Orko mob boss. Because I at first, it seemed pretty realistic as far as like it happening. Like the betrayal was done pretty well as far as you thinking like it was genuine. Mm. Um, but then I immediately remembered before this all happened that Angelo asked for them to fetch a chicken. And it was like, oh, we still haven't seen what they've done with the chicken. There's more to this plan. And that's when I immediately knew it was fake and that they were going to poison him. So it... I, it was a good attempt, but if they had left out the bluntness of that little go get a chicken thing beforehand, it would have played out a bit better because yeah. that would have lasted more than five seconds as far as like surprising. But yeah, um, and I pretty much covered it. Like, I, I, yeah, I, I was never that big on 91 days to begin with. Like I mentioned, I'm not, I've not I don't have an inherent fondness for mob stories like a lot of people seem to um, like. I don't like Bakuno because it's a mob story, even though it's not really a mob story. It's because all the characters are wacky and weird and well-defined and fun. And this is, like, not that at all. Like, they're just kind of there, for the most part, just doing stuff. And it feels like it's supposed to have impact just because of what it literally is, rather than it actually having any real build-up at all. So, yeah, that's that's 91 days in a nutshell so far. But... But we're at the halfway point. Things could turn around. Who really knows? We don't really know what Angelo's plan is, what he's going to do. We still don't know who the fourth person is. And they made it very clear in episode six that that fourth person is going to play a very important part in the story as far as, like, maybe it could be some kind of plot twist or maybe it'll be something... I was going to say something unexpected, but that would also be a plot twist. So it, it could throw a, a very big wrench in the story based on who it is. And episode six made it very clear that it wants you to possibly try and figure out who it is yeah but also that maybe you can't figure out who it is and just to like remember that there's a fourth person in the back of your mind for stuff that's gonna happen later so seeing how that fourth person stuff's gonna play out is probably gonna influence my thoughts on the show overall once that plays out um was there anything else you want to add about 91 days list uh yeah no that it's 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 not very substantial show to talk about really yeah yeah, it's just because things happen. Like, there's no real yeah. weight to stuff that's happening. So, you know, it just happens. And you're like, okay, whatever. Mm -hmm. So, there's just nothing to talk about. Um, now for the moment of truth. Uh, have you caught up with Thunderbolt Fantasy, Lewis? Like, if caught up means that I was in the presence of them playing from start to finish yes if if any attention was required no what did you think of episode 5 and 6 of Thunderbolt Fantasy Lewis I'd rather watch grass growing on wet paint than watch that made literally no sense it made sense in my head um i guess that's why you don't like thunderbolt fantasy because that's your kind of logic i see that didn't make really doesn't make sense because how the fuck does analogies co inside with my liking for a fucking piece of fiction like what the fuck's wrong okay and your brain don't work good bruh that's good logic. Um, my problem with Thunderbolt Fantasy as a whole is that 
anything that it tries to do is done tenfold better in a, in another show. That's Disregar- not a good argument. Disregarding the entire puppetry, because I know that would have probably been one of your things. But I feel as if I am wasting my time on it. That's what I feel like I'm doing here. Because, like, I have... Every anime is a waste of time. Immense <laughs> and complete apathy for the show. Like, it's just... Do you ever feel like you're better than something? Like, you feel no. like... you feel You feel like you have a reason not to be in a place. Thunderbolt Fantasy is that. Because... I rather, like, there's, I don't want to watch the show. I feel like my entire, like, uh, I don't want to watch it. It's, it's boring. It is so fucking boring. Well, maybe if you actually paid attention, it wouldn't be boring. See, that's the thing, though. I have to be interested and not bored to actually, like, pay attention, though. That's the fucking dilemma here, which I'm having a little bit of struggling with, Ryoga. See, like, but you're saying the show's boring because it's boring. It's just a self fulfilling prophecy. You're not even paying attention. <laughs> okay, I I had to like I I li- listen. I have to give these shows a shot, right? I have to like kind of think to myself. Oh yeah, this one's gonna be good. This one's gonna be good. I gotta keep going. But like each time I keep going back, it's just the same shit. It's just like a dude fucking has to f- t- really strong dude that is just like. Is an ordinary dude. He's an ordinary dude that is very strong for some reason, but he's an ordinary dude. Just l- let that be a like a, a consistent thought. He stumbles across this maiden who has lost a fucking sword, and now he has to go hunt it down for some unknown reason. Because, uh, well, actually, it's not unknown because it's literally just like a holy war. Some shit will come out or something. Then he comes across a wise old man. Well, not he's wise. He's just got... He's not old. He's just got, like, white hair or some shit. Then they stumble across, like, all these other heroes. Like, I don't care. Like, it's... Akasi Yoyona did a lot better. I just don't feel like I have any real worth in being a part of this show. Like, it's not anything... I don't want to watch this. If this was any other show... I would have dropped it from the offset. It's not even like I have immense disdain for the show. It is just one of the most boring pieces of fiction I've ever consumed in my entire life. So I feel like I need to just... It drains me, man. It drains my entire does it being. it drain you when you're not paying attention? It drains me when I try to pay attention. This is a little contradiction I'm going for here. I feel like I I don't need this in my life, you know? There's some things that you just got to kick to the curb and just say que sera to. This is one of these those things. The Thunderbolt Fantasy is not one of those things. You can you say anything that you want about it and how like it's like, you know, it's masterclass, but the fact that, like, I have to, like, talk about this on, like, an anime podcast, it, the thought of that irks me, and I don't want to do that, because it's, it's just, it's not, it's not me, it's not who I am, it's not what I stand for, I came into this world with ideals and legacies, and I have my pride, it's not very big, but I have it, so, I'm choosing, I'm electing to not participate in to- uh, Thunderbolt Fantasy. I, I think there's merit in a show that can give you a midlife crisis. <laughs> it's not exactly midlife, unless I'm going to die at 40. Well, hopefully, though. It's, it's, it's not... 20th life I was gonna say quarter but it's not a quarter either no no you can have a wait you can have a midlife crisis before you're 50 what midlife crisis doesn't literally mean the middle of your life it's just like 
a midlife crisis is like a middle point of your life. It's not like literally it's like you're it's not like when you hit 50, you get a fucking season pass to a midlife crisis amusement park. <laughs> like it's just oh, a that thing that nice. happens, you know, when it's like the turning point in your life and you like need to figure out shit or something. Well, like, I feel like that's just kind of like, you know, people figuring out stuff. I see uh, Midlife Crisis has, like, you know, the... Well, first off, it has a, a song. But, like, secondly, uh, it has, like, certain characteristics, like, that are very, you know... Uh, stereotypical of people who are trying to go back to their youth, you know? It's one of the... all of a sudden? I try to be. It is, yeah. <laughs> Armchair psychology, the PhD everyone on the internet has. Um, I printed my PhD out, so I'm just that little bit better than people on Reddit, but like, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Wait, was it one of those sites where you just literally put in your name, and then it's like, congratulations, here's your PhD? I made it in PowerPoint, actually. Um, oh, was... not Microsoft Paint. No, uh, no, no, like, I, I struggle to keep my mouse, uh, from doing straight lines when I'm, like, doing the pictures, so I just thought, like, you know, yeah. I also got taught how to use, uh, PowerPoint in college, so I was like, eh, might as well use my college education to good use, you know? Hmm. Anyways, about Thunderful Fantasy, it's funny that you're not paying any attention and you're whining about the story, considering you got something wrong. Actually, you got oh. a couple things wrong. Because uh, okay. you, you mentioned you're not paying any attention, which would explain quite a few things. So, you know, like you mentioned a little thing, like what, what, what was the comment you made about ordinary dude being super strong or something? Like what what were we saying about that? That, that was a bad thing or something? Yeah, I don't know. I just thought it was kind of like normal, weird for like this, like, you know, this guy just be taking a stroll and then he just comes across this hot anime babe that's who's also like a super strong samurai. I just thought like that was just a nice little coincidence. But, you know, like, you know. Fiction well, actually, is nothing but just a convenient set of coincidences, so I guess I shouldn't complain about that. He came across the guy first, though. And then, Remember, uh, he ended up at the temple, and then he had a conversation with him about taking the umbrella from, like, the Buddha statue, and then he ran into the girl. Uh, it was like a karmic thing. Okay. That's... Uh, we we can talk about... The, 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 um, What's the word? Semantics, 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 all we want on the show. But like, point is, karma, you stole Umbrella and got a hot anime babe out of it. I feel like, you know. Well, he didn't get a hot anime babe. He got a whole lot of fucking trouble because now a giant evil cult's trying to kill him. Yeah, but like, you know, when, when all is said and done, I feel like what he'll look back on was the true thing he gained from this we all know what he's gonna like say when we're like all all said and done like he's like i really enjoyed the ride and the explorations i've had no he's not gonna say that he's like i got some fine booty for me waiting at home like that's what he's gonna be saying like you know seems to have very little interest in that they made it pretty clear in the most recent episodes that uh he's not an ordinary person they've made that pretty clear which is why your comment about him being ordinary guy was extra hilarious because the recent episodes made it very clear that he is clearly not normal and that there's more to be found out about this because dude didn't show up for no reason. He was up to something and the other characters don't entirely know what's going on with him. Also, as of the most recent episodes, he's not the strongest one in the group. Although actually we don't know, they haven't fought yet. But now they have another dude in the group whose beautiful gorgeous name, Screaming Phoenix Killer, is the most amazing thing ever. Uh, and he basically just one-shotted one of the enemy generals, which was incredible. Uh, which is why it's extra interesting to see what will happen next episode because uh, they could totally be doing the thing where they're like, look, this guy is easily the strongest in the group. He one-shotted that enemy general. And now the leader just showed up. And if he one-shot Screaming Phoenix Killer, then it's going to be like, oh, he's really strong. You know, it's kind of like the one kind of way to gauge power levels because the problem DBZ had was like, let's just use numbers. And it's like, that doesn't really hold much weight to it because it's just like, well, whoever wins, wins. But when you have a character who's very clearly strong, like can't get touched, fucks up enemy general... And it's like, wow, he's, he's, he's untouchable. And the leader shows up and then kills him easily. Then it's like, oh, shit. Then you understand, like, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? The food chain. You understand the food chain of power levels. And you're just like, shit, that guy's really strong. What the fuck are they going to do? 
Who really knows though if they actually go for that route? Anyways, point is you got some stuff wrong, which maybe you would have gotten right if you actually paid attention, because you probably would have actually liked the show if you actually paid attention. Because yeah, the right. characters are fun and colorful, and uh, Sayako Har is in it, and that's really all that matters. Like if you try to win the show over for me, it's not gonna work. Like words can only go so far when you have like an actual experience to back it up. Like your experience of not paying any attention to the show. I paid attention for like the first episode and a good few of the second episode, but like that's as far as I went because that's all I really needed to like kind of gauge that I don't really care about the show, you know? For all the reasons that then got countered because of things that you would know if you paid attention. What? No. Like, I just said that, like, people drop shows early on for, like, lack of interest. I'm simply doing that here with Thunderbolt Fantasy. But why is there a lack of interest? That's the real question. Because it doesn't pander to my tastes, obviously. Like, it's, it's just not... You mean you don't want to bone puppets? Well, let's just keep that out of the <laughs> discussion for now. Um, my problem with the show is that it's just... I guess it's my own fault if we're going to look into it a little bit too far. <laughs> but I feel like, you know, my entire... I guess, yearning for something new, something inspired, something that will keep me coming back for more is something that will make me kind of like, you know, keep that kind of interest alive. Whereas this, whatever, is just... Like, it doesn't... It's really, to me, it's pretty uninspired. Like, it doesn't really... Sh try to like go that extra mile for me like it's it's not i feel like i don't need to just uh like i i i try i really do try to like uh, disregarding this entire discussion right now i do try to like actually pay attention to this stuff this though was just it was just Okay. Yet <laughs> the show is just just what? Boring. Like <laughs> but why? There's always a reason for why something's boring. You have to figure out why. Oh really? Like, you know, some people who say to yourself like, you know, oh yeah, I just like it cuz I like it. I don't see But why. they have a reason for liking it. They just haven't figured out what it is yet. You don't like something for no reason. Mm, no. Well, I feel completely bored while sitting down in front of my computer and watching it. I have zero interest for any ongoings that may occur in this show. For the reason being... Because I feel like I don't, I'm not going to get anything out of the show. I am, I have seen a lot of this show already from just, I guess, osmosis from other shows, you know? People like, stuff like Akasa Yoyona or even Nobunaga Concerto. Like, things like that that just, you know... I, I feel like I don't need to just kind of, like, see more of the same thing which I've seen. Like, let's just totally disregard the entire fucking uh, the, 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 the puppet thing. Like, is that's new, I guess. But, you know, more of what I've already kind of, like, seen, you know, is is bad. I don't, I don't want to watch more of what I could have seen better in some other other place, I, I think. Um Yeah. Yeah, that that's 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 my um my reason. Well, two things. One, show X is bad because why does it better is always the worst <laughs> argument ever. And I don't <laughs> and I don't like when reviewers do that because it's lazy as fuck and also disingenuous. Because of reasons that I would get into if I go into a scripted video, which basically go along the lines of, like, 
if you judge a show based on another show, then, well, not only if you actually grade shows, that would completely fuck your grading scale, but because, how do I put this? If you grade a show based on another show, then you're just basically judging shows based on whichever you happen to watch first, which isn't really the fault of the show at all. It's just whatever show you happen to watch first. So you can use other shows as an example of how to do something right. Like, if a show does something you don't like, you can use another show as an example of how to do that thing right. But you can't just say, I don't like this because this did it better. That's lazy. But that's the first thing. The second thing is... Uh, you mentioned that Akasuke Yona was similar to this show, but it's not, like, at all. Because Akasuke Yona is about this princess who's, like, in a kingdom, and then she gets betrayed by, like, her cousin, and she has to go out and, like, gather a bunch of, like, weird deity dudes. I just don't want to watch this show, this... man. I just don't want to watch it. <laughs> but I want you to give good arguments, at least. You can't just say little puppets and, like, well, no one gives a shit, and this isn't going to go anywhere, even though Ryoka's clearly given examples of things that happened in the most recent episodes for things that it's clearly doing, and then act like that counts. That's, I want you to at least give reasons. That's nice, man, but I don't, I can't find reasons because I feel completely and utterly apathetic for, towards this show. Because you've I, already sold yourself on not liking the show. That's the point. <laughs> What's wrong with not liking things, Ryoka? I just don't. It, I don't care if you don't like the show. I have an issue with you deciding you don't like the show already. You barely even paid attention to it, and you're like, this show sucks cock, and you're just not paying attention anymore. <sighs> That's deciding cock. ahead of time whether you like something, which is something I get accused of as a reviewer a lot, and it's fucking shitty. And it's like, it's so dumb. And you're literally proving it right now by not having any arguments. You're just like, this show sucks. And then every time I'm like, but that doesn't make any sense. You're like, but it sucks. And I'm just like, but that doesn't make any sense. And we're just going in circles. I feel like we've hit a stalemate here. That we We've cannot... only hit a stalemate because you keep repeating yourself. And we cannot find a compromise with our words. Because you're not trying to compromise. <laughs> so I feel like it's best that we just go our own separate pathways in our logic here. Let's just acknowledge the fact that like I am not I'm not capable of appreciating the things that you appreciate. I don't like this show because it I find it boring. The the reason, now if we're going to stretch this the extra mile here, uh, as to why I, fe I, I, I find it boring is, as well, because... Eh? It's, uh, because... Uh... Like... Uh... Like, I don't... I don't... I don't feel anything for the characters, you know? It's just... There's no connection. I just, I like when you just when you're kind of like selling yourself to kind of like be this sort of like. Here's the thing: things may be going a little bit too fast for me. Maybe, maybe <laughs> because. <laughs> When you hear someone say, I don't pay much attention to the episodes, and then things are going too fast, you're like, just fucking kill me now. I'm literally pulling excuses out of my ass. Like, this I know you it. are! <laughs> it couldn't be any more obvious. Okay. The reason why I feel like I don't, I don't want to pay attention to the show is because when things are just kind of like moving along you know I don't want to say this because Steinsgate is very guilty for this but when things are moving along you know a little too conveniently and when things are kind of like you know set up on accident almost I feel that I just don't give a shit like that's my purpose like there wasn't enough sort of like build up with the characters beforehand like that Steinsgate did have before it went all sort of like well isn't this just convenient like that's 
probably the reason why I just don't give a shit. The characters themselves don't really have any sort of feeling or any sort of spirit within them because uh, to me they oh here we go the, to me they're just sort of <laughs> they're just sort of like things that are just kind of like stereotypes that are just kind of plastered onto them to kind of like fit a narrative without actually sort of creating something new you know like i don't I just, I just don't, I just don't really care, you know. Okay, okay. I, I know you were making excuses up, but I'll bite. Okay. What's too convenient? Well, I'd say the entire thing of like them all coming along together, you know, for karma reasons is a little. But too... we now sent out a message to to for them to gather to meet up to do this. What? That, that that happened at like the end of episode one he sent out a message he sent out a bunch of messages to people to meet up so they could go attack the fortress and stuff like they didn't just randomly show up they they were told to meet up no like the the, the, the three the first three man what first three the, the, you mean the... when the guy just ran across the guy at the tree you mean the entire <laughs> premise for the show yeah sure like yeah yeah the fact that like it's all kind of like based on karma for all we know like that's that's a sort of <laughs> man like i just don't want to watch this show man it just bores me lewis you, you do understand that there's a difference between like convenience in a plot and like the story literally being set up right like would you say that ryuji finding taiga's letter at the beginning of torador is convenient no, because the entire point is to set up the story of them helping each other try and get their crushes to get their feelings across and stuff. Like, there's, there's the, like, the story wouldn't happen without these things happening. Like, that's the entire reason that there is a story in the first place. Like, sure, if you don't want your meetup of him, he just happened across his path one time. Like, let's go to that alternate reality. Oh, look, he kept walking. Great fucking story. End of episode. Woohoo. Like, the <laughs> The premise of a show is allowed to have quote unquote convenient things happen because it's setting up the show. It's the point. So I thought you meant convenient stuff as in later things. And uh, <laughs> I don't even remember the second argument you gave. Something about characters not being spirited enough despite the fucking blonde haired Lance user being nothing but like a cocky show off who wants to be like well known all around and in the most recent episodes is trying to show up screaming Phoenix Killer is like the best dude around yeah real unspirited well to be honest man like i'd probably argue against my own arguments i'm saying this, <laughs> to be honest like i don't i know because you already admitted you're just making them up i, I just am. bit the bait for no reason <laughs> like i really cannot come up with like a solid argument here it's just it's because you've sold yourself on not liking the show just sure it sure just yeah it. sure like i i guess i have because like i just don't care like i watched the first episode and i watched the second episode i think and like i just apathetic throughout mainly because i guess i just have too high of expectations here but i just Apathy just overcame me when I watched those episodes, man, and I just, I just, I just stopped watching. Well, I didn't stop watching. I did have the episodes. Oh, it, on the in truth the comes out. I did. I did. <laughs> technically, I stopped paying attention. I guess I just had the rest of the episodes play in the background while I played Overwatched. So you use that information for whatever you wish i guess yeah moral of the story is that overwatch is bad it makes you not watch shows okay <laughs> <sighs> hmm. well in fairness it made me stop watching a puppet show not anime boom which is probably the most important thing 
since we're kind of setting this up for a animation podcast, uh, an anime podcast. I never called and, this an anime podcast. Uh, well, I'm pretty sure we've all kind of accepted it as one. Just it's not my because... fault you interpreted things I never said. Oh, please. <laughs> Also, we've already had this argument about whether this should be qualified as anime or not. We it's had not this a- last time we talked about it. It's not. Did you already forget that that happened. It's not animation, though. That's the thing. Like it's it, it, it's. But there's it's, CG in it. Oh, like they use animation techniques, there is and the CG anime industry in live is very action involved shit, with But it. no one considers that to be animation, man. Like no one says that that's animation. It's just like a a thing to enhance a detail that we see on screen. The fact that, like, you would call a little CG effect here and justify the overarching thing as animation, that kind of, like, makes you say, well, what stops fucking uh, Interstellar from being animation? Like, you know, because it's live action. There's animate, there's CG in that. What's stopping? But it's primarily live action. Yeah, and this is primarily live action as well. No, but it's puppets that are very anime and model. Also, yeah. it doesn't have the support of the anime industry, such as the VA industry helping out. The script writers are primarily from the Japanese anime industry. Really, the only thing that's being done is the puppetry and the filming of the puppetry in Taiwan. And that's pretty much the only involvement they have on it. Everything else is pretty much involved in the anime industry. So, <laughs> so like, you're saying that, like, if, by your definition, an anime is literally just uh, something that's being backed by what you would call anime producers and stereotypes, despite what we're seeing on the screen, if there's literally a live action show that is being produced by everything you've just mentioned. What, you mean it has like say you voiceovers and yeah. it's being written by anime guys? Yeah. Yeah. Like literally. Sure, just why like... not? That'd be interesting. But would it be anime though? I wouldn't I'm not even saying this is anime. I'm just saying it's a bridge between the anime industry and a form of medium that's in Taiwan that no one's really paid attention to other than people in Taiwan obviously. Well like so, my, my entire point was saying like this is an anime so I don't know why we're kind of discussing it on like this cuz it's airing in an anime time slot and it's released on Crunchyroll. But, like J dramas get released on Crunchyroll, man. Like I don't. See yeah, but how in that... a completely different section. Okay, hang on a second now. What? Like, hang on. okay, uh, it's great that you're like uh, using like you know Crunchyroll as the umbrella here to like justify what's an anime here, but like it's not the only thing I'm using. You just took it in that direction. And. And a time slot, but it's not animation here. Like it's it's literally just it's pretty fucking anime. <sighs> Looks like we ran out of time here, folks. Uh, we've really we ran thought... out of time ages ago. We're yeah. we've been over time for a while. Yeah, like I I feel like we need to we need to stop this. <laughs> Mainly because it's going nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, we're just literally going in circles. Like, uh, like, you're not gonna change my opinion. I'm not gonna be able to share my opinion. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> no, you're sharing yours. I'm just saying how silly it is. I well, I'm I was talking my opinion on like, Thunderbolt Fantasy since I really don't really have one. But yeah. It's still sort of like I don't like it because it doesn't pander to me enough. I guess. What would be your pandering? What what is what is your pandering demographic, Lewis? What does the show need to do? Main character has to be voiced by Uchidamaya. That's a mm-hmm. start. Um It would preferably uh feature a college setting. Uh I like college settings. Uh there would probably be a sort of um I say anything that that tackles the sort of like day to day struggles, maybe, rather than somebody just sort of like throwing in a uh, like they could be a romance subplot or anything, but something like some like, something like that, you know, like some that kind of like tackles the sort of day to day hardships that people struggle with, you know. 
some way that could go from like issues within the family to mental illness for all we know like there there are things there which generally get overlooked yeah yeah that'd be a nice show to watch have nice there been any comedy. shows any shows that fit this pandering of yours not in college though or with main characters voiced by uchida maya so. so shows that just miss one of your criteria yeah, well, we're we're going full on pandering here. Like, I'm not saying I won't enjoy those other shows, but I'm just saying if we're going full on here, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, we should probably end. We yeah. we got your we we learned what your pandering is. That that was the most important thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what were you gonna add? Well, I was just literally just gonna say if Uchidamaya is really involved in any way, shape, or form, I'm probably just gonna watch it anyways like it that's pandering enough really so wait if a later character in thunderbolt fantasy's voice would shoot a my you'd watch it you'd actually pay attention i pay attention to like when when she's on screen <laughs> wow yeah anyways that's that's good for the week so We'll uh, we'll hopefully be on time next week, recording on Friday, because we've been recording on Saturdays for a bit now, which is kind of not optimal, but it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's the backup it's day whatever. in case we need it, which we kind of needed. 91 Days didn't air on time, so, yeah, or it wasn't released on time, I should say, so we had to wait for that, so we figured we may as well just wait a day, so hopefully that doesn't happen next week, so then we can actually record it on Friday. That's the wrong with having shows we talk about being released on Friday. Um... So, yeah, uh, we don't need closing comments. We've gone on for too long. We'll just see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.